Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this lecture, we will study about triggers in SQL. Trigger in practical terms is a small device that when released causes some function or action to be performed like bullet firing. Let's see how this term works for databases. A trigger is a series of actions that are associated with certain events such as insertion, deletions or updates to a particular relation. And these actions are performed whenever these events happen. Maybe let's say if I want that whenever it rains, I should cover all the items in my backyard. So there is an event and if it occurs, then there is some action associated with it, which will be performed, else nothing will happen. For other types of constraints like attribute, tuple and assertion, runtime errors occurs in case of violation, while for the case of triggers, nothing happens. In databases, actions could be any sequence of database operations like insert, update or delete or even aborting some transactions etc. It is different from assertions in a sense that it knows exactly when to fire the action while assertions are fired on several events. We have certain options for the implementation of triggers. We might check conditions and perform actions either on the current instance of all relations that exist before triggering event or on the state that exists after the triggering event. So we may have old tuples and new tuples and old relation and new relations etc. It is also possible that we may define our events that only refers a attribute or set of attributes. That is maybe if x attribute changes then perform this y action. There can be two options for the execution of triggers, row level and statement level. Row level trigger executes once for every modified tuple. If let's say 1500 tuples are modified, then this trigger will be fired 1500 times. While statement level executes once for all the tuples that are changed in one SQL statement. It is usually used when we are doing some bug operations, that is adding 10,000 products at once. This type of trigger will be fired one time for the bug product insert. Actually, a statement level trigger is executed once whenever a statement of the appropriate type is executed. No matter how many rows, 0, 1 or many, it actually affects. For instance, if we update an entire table with the SQL update statement, a statement level update trigger would execute only once, while a row level trigger would execute once for each tuple to which an update was applied. This will be more clearer in coming examples. For creating triggers, we need to type create trigger and the name of our trigger. In the next line, we have option of specifying the time, that is before or after the event. We also have instead of option, which will be discussed in coming lectures. After this, we will specify event that is insert, update or delete etc. and attribute name on which the update event is performed and table name of which attribute belongs. Then we will type referencing and after this we can name our old and new rows and old and new tables as old row as old tuple or old table as old table. We should also note that old table is either deleted tuples or old versions of updated tuples. A new table is either inserted tuples or new versions of updated tuples. After referencing, we will specify the type that is row level trigger or statement level trigger. For row level, we will type for each row and for statement level, we will type for each statement. Statement level is set to default. If we omit for each row, then for each statement will be set. After all of this, we will write our set of actions given x condition is true. So when our condition is true, we have our set of actions that will be written between begin and end. If we have one action, then we can skip begin and end keywords. It is to be noted here that all statements or keywords in gray are optional or disallowed in certain cases. For example, in case of event, insert, old row is disallowed as there is no old row. In case of delete, new row is disallowed as there is new, no new row. Let's turn to examples to understand how to type triggers. In this example, we have three tables, student, campus and apply. Student has ID, name, address, GPA and number of the students of the high school where he studied earlier. And campus table has its location, number of enrolled students and its rank. 
Rank is position of the campus among multiple campuses. That is 1 means highest and 10 means the lowest. We also have some constraints that is campus rank should always be equal to or less than 10. An ID in apply table is ID of student who has applied in multiple majors. And decision is the status which tells us whether the student is admitted to campus or not. Our problem is that we want to automatically accept outstanding students in Berkeley and do not want to manually review their application. If any student has GPA greater than 3.9 and his high school was big, that is has more than 1500 students, then we need to auto accept it to the Berkeley campus. We will do this using triggers. So, so our trigger name is auto accept and event is insert on apply table. So if there is any kind of insert tuple request in apply table, then we need to set the decision status in apply table to yes. If students fulfills our desired criteria. So we will type after insert on apply. We have referenced our new tuple or students who have applied as new applicant and we want this trigger to be executed once for each modified tuple. So we will type for each row. That is whenever there is an insert, then it will be executed for the modified tuple. Our condition is that student must have applied to Berkeley and his GPA should be greater than 3.9 and his high school size should be greater than 1500. GPA and high school size has been extracted from student table with applicant ID and compared with 3.9 and 1500 respectively. If these three conditions are true, then we will update our apply table by changing the tuple of that particular student having student ID as apply ID and location as new inserted tuples location and date as the inserted tuple date and set its decision to Y. We have added date in update check because same student can apply on different dates too. We can solve same problem without a row level trigger. Without mentioning for each row, trigger will be executed once for each relevant statement. That is, after the change, it will be fired only once. And with one time checking, it has updated complete table. Here we have referenced our new table as new applicant. We have no when or condition and have directly updated our apply table by setting the decision to yes for applications having ID, location and date present in the new table and satisfying all the three mentioned conditions. So let's change our example. So our problem is if campus enrollment increases from below 7000 to above 7000, then we must delete all applicants to that campus state after 2.15.20 and set all Y decisions for applications before 2.15.20 to U. So if our enrollment attribute of campus table is updated, then we need to perform some action. Since it is an update, so we need old tuple and new tuple as well. We need our trigger to execute once for all the modified tuples. So we are picking row level trigger. Our condition in when says if old tuple had enrollment number less than or equal to 7000 and the update event causes enrollment number to increase from 7000, then we will delete from apply table all the applications who have applied after the date 15 February 2020 for the campus of which enrollment has exceeded 7000 and update the apply table by changing decision of all the applications from Y to U for the same campus. We also have another example where we have a company schema in which we have six tables employee, department, department locations, project, works on and dependents. Employee table contains information about employee, its name, social security number, address, gender, salary and supervisor social security number. Department contains name, its ID, manager's SSN and manager's start date. Department locations has locations of department, project has its name, number, location and department number. Works on has employee ID, project number and number of hours and employee has worked on the project. Dependent table contains information about employee dependents like father, mother, etc. We want to check if employee's salary is greater than salary of his supervisor. Then supervisor must be informed. So events are either insert or update of salary or supervisor attribute. That is either salary or supervisor is changed, then trigger should be fired. If such event occurred, then we need to compare this new salary value of every employee with the salary of his or her manager. If it is greater than supervisor, 
then he must be informed via an already written stored procedure in form supervisor else nothing will happen so for every modified tuple this trigger will be fired